Rather blunt, just resubscribe for nine months. Hey, welcome back. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome back to my live stream. Today is June 20th, 2019, and it's great to see you. We're going to write a little bit of code today. Oh my gosh. Svava jumped the gun there, to get, got in early with the nine months, nine, nine months watching me. Oh my gosh, Svava, how do you put up with me? How, how do you put up with me? You have to ask me nicely. Okay, I've, I'm asking nicely. How how do you put up with me? Oh my gosh, sitting here looking at this, right? There's so much going on. It's, it's... Uh... Houston, we have a problem. No, no, we don't have a problem. Yes, mischief will be managed here today, of course. It's great to see everybody here in the chat room. I see, is that Louise in whom? Welcome, Louise. Om Ganesh is here, McNerdius. Wheelchair Sean. Wheelchair Sean. Thank you. We've got a little bit to talk about with Wheelchair Sean today. Uh, let's see. Looking down. Smab is mostly lurking. That's okay. I'm mostly lurking too. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but trust me, it's going to work. Uh, I love the, the Clarkio chair there. The Clarkio emote. McNerdius. Well done. Claudio says, trying to learn more about Twitch TV and how does that compare to the live streaming of YouTube? Claudio... It starts with this really good chat room. Start with the chat room, check out the custom emotes, check out the great integrations and extensions that folks use, um, and check out how Twitch doesn't have problems with um, Godwin's Law. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, let's see, Stelzy's here, and uh, Kemp's Alex, great to see you. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I've got, this is the, the last of the new hats that I got while I was in Florida last week. I only got four new hats while I was there, and I'm, I'm giving one to somebody else. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. But um, his name might be... Scott! So, he doesn't know what the hat is, and I haven't shown you the hat. Is. Anyways, um, so this is the Apollo 50th anniversary hat. That's the Apollo 50th anniversary logo. We landed on the moon 50 years ago. 50 years ago this month. Amazing. Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon. Um, so NASA is observing, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing uh, with this logo, and I got it on a cool trucker hat. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh, no, I mentioned Godwin's Law. Now someone's going to invoke it. Nope, not going to happen. Nope, but Godwin's Law does not happen on Twitch. The moderation on Twitch is phenomenal. Um, the community here is positive. Uh, very outgoing, very inclusive, and I think the other thing that you'll see about this community is um, not only is it welcoming, but we're encouraging. We want to help other folks. We want to make sure everybody grows, and particularly here in, in the science and technology communities, we want we want you to learn, have a good time, and uh, yeah, have have some fun together. The mods are pretty great. All right, uh, let's see. So I have, I have, I have a sneaky suspicion looking at how many other live coders are streaming right now. I have a suspicion that we're going to get a couple raids a little bit later. Maybe one or two. So um, earlier today, I actually, I was lucky enough. Our friend Quill Tony is in my town for the Too Many Games conference. Uh, conference? Convention. Convention. And uh, I got a chance to have lunch with the one and only Quill Tony today. I didn't get any pictures. I didn't take a picture when I saw Quill Tony. But it was great. Um, so good to see her and get to talk uh, Twitch streamer talk about all the funny weird things that happen when you're when you're on this side of the stream. Um, let's get some music playing here in the background. We're going to write a little bit of code today back in our scheduling application that we've been building, and we're building user interface components for it with HTML, CSS and C sharp. It's a little bit different, but we're going to have fun with that. It's it's something interesting to learn and 
Um, I'm learning a little bit about CSS Grid as we're going along here. My gosh, tremendous. So easy to use. And, and we're going to end up with a really nice interface here. So let's get some music playing here. I think I'm going to play... Is this on? Of course it's on! Fairy Wings is here! Thank you, Fairy, for that very kind cheer. 200 bits. We'll make a donation, just like we will for, for Svava's uh, sub. All our cheers, all our subs, we'll make do a donation to Veterans Who Code. And for those 200 bits, three other folks in chat just got pride emotes. Thanks to Twitch's partnership with uh, Supportnering... Su Supportnering... How about this one? Oh, that one is too! Three more folks are gonna get uh, are gonna get pride emotes. Uh, thanks to Twitch's support of the Trevor Project, every cheer, two hundred bits or more, the uh, the Trevor Project will see a donation from Twitch, and you'll get to use pride emotes for the rest of the month. Really cool stuff. Um, poorly defined behavior. Welcome. It's good to see you. I hope you have better behavior than poorly defined behavior. I hope you have some good behavior in our chat room. We want to make sure everybody's welcoming and family friendly here. Um, I'm going to play this song. This is called Gold. So, just checking again. I mean, Twitch and all. Thank you, Fairy. There's And more folks are going to get emotes. Thank you so much for that very kind cheer. I appreciate that. Um... And we'll make some. We'll make another donation. That's tremendous. So this is from. I got an ice cube. Uh, this is from Carl Franklin's music to code by. This is music that's designed to get you in the groove, to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on. Oh wow! It is working. <laughs> this is payback, isn't this? Thank you, fairy. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. 1,000 bits! And I think 25 others in chat just now received some pride emotes. And uh, you're going to be able to cheer and show your support for the Trevor Project in this June, this Pride Month. Thank you so much, Fairy. I appreciate all of that. Um, so this is music to code by. This is designed to get you in the groove, get you focused on whatever the task might be at hand, unless one of your friends happens to be cheering a couple hundred bits every few seconds here. I, I don't know. Um, and uh, check it out. Thank you so much, uh, M Holloway 24 for that uh, music command. If you can execute the music command in chat, and it'll give you the link, so you can you can purchase the songs if you'd like. You can also download a couple songs free at musictoflowby.com. Thanks so much, Carl. We appreciate your support. Um, and uh, we're going to continue. We, we love listening to your music here on stream. It's great stuff that gets us in the groove, gets us focused. Freedom for the win, one, two, three, with those pride flags. Absolutely. Great to see those. Always want to include and support folks that uh, might be a little different from some of us, and that's okay. We want to celebrate those differences. We want to let people be themselves. All right, so Boki asks, will this be a C-sharp beginner understandable stream? Yes, C-sharp beginner. I always like to make sure that I explain things as we go along. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat room and we'll, we've got some, uh, some other folks there that are happy to help you out. And I'll try to explain things as best I can as we go along, so. Is that Facu Rodriguez? Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Hello. So uh, let's head over to this view. I'm, I am on a follower goal. We're racing towards 8,000 total followers. When we get to 8,000 followers, if it's before September 15th, that's a week and a half before TwitchCon, I'm going to dye this beard rainbow for both .NET Conf, which is that week as well, and TwitchCon. So, I'm one of the hosts for .NET Conf. You're going to see me saluting you all through the three days with a rainbow beard. As a thanks to you, our Twitch viewers. Alright? Um, so, help us get there. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets. Sign up for Twitch. Click that follow button, that heart at the top of the... It's, it's right over there. Somewhere right up here. Um, click that heart. Give us a follow. It's free. 
doesn't it, it doesn't cost you a thing and uh, become part of the community and you'll get a notification next time I go live. Um, we have two events coming up that I want to make sure you know about. You. No, no, not, not the person sitting over there. You. Yeah, you. Uh, know about. We're going to be on July 12th. Click the events button up top and you'll see more about these. Control click it. Don't click away. Don't click away. You're going to... Okay, they're not seeing me anymore. Um, when, when they come back. You'll see there's two events, two big workshops coming up. July 12th. We're going to spend all day Friday, July 12th, talking about building your first ASP.NET Core application. Last time we ran this workshop last year, we had a bunch of friends follow us, but I know a lot of new folks have joined us, joined the community since. We're going to be talking about building your first ASP.NET Core workshop with ASP.NET Core 2.2. That's the current release version that folks are encouraged to use. But we're going to be using Blazor here today. Well, on July 19th, the week after, we're going to run another workshop. Build your first Blazor application with ASP.NET Core 3, the upcoming version that will be released at .NET Conf in September. So you're going to get a preview, a look ahead as to what you can do with Blazor. We're going to do some work with Blazor today, but you're going to get a full day workshop on July 19th. Bookmark those days. Click through that. Control click the events thing. Don't click away. Don't click away. And there are remind me buttons for each one of those events. Of course, if you're following along, you're going to get notifications. Just like Hammy1010 is now going to get notifications. Hammy, welcome to the to the channel. And uh, I hope you join me for a full day of learning. And we'll, we'll have some guests stop through. We'll have, we, we might even have a giveaway or two. I'm working on a little bit of that. So July 12, July 19, I hope you join me. There's Rambling Geek. Hello, hello. Love all the emotes there. McNerdius, thank you. All right. So... Moving on. So let's see, we covered the hat, covered this, covered that, did all the things, we got this. All right, let's start writing some code. First off, we're working on our resource management project. You can see it here. This is on my GitHub. This is actually on a channel specific GitHub so that we can share and do pull requests over here real easily. Uh, let me post this link into chat for you. Pac-Man Jr. says, picked up a Stream Deck XL. Nice. Do you think the API I worked on would work with it? Yes, it does. Um, so previously, if you go out to the Fritz and Friends group here, you'll see there is a Stream Deck toolkit right there. The toolkit gives you a template and a library that allows you to program and build actions for a Stream Deck. Stream Deck looks like this. 15 buttons that you can customize. You can put whatever logos on it that you'd like. Make them do whatever you'd like. But you can, with these libraries, build your own uh, actions and capabilities into it. The only difference between the, the uh, different stream decks, so there's a stream deck mini that's only six buttons. The normal one is only 15. And then there's the full size, the, the new XL one that's 32. Um, it's the same library. It actually works with the Stream Deck application and allows that to communicate. Really great stuff. Um, but when you when you detect and you look at the properties of the device that you're running on from the button that you're programming, you'll see the size is not three by five or two by three. It's what is it four by eight. So yeah, that's the only difference that you'll see. And even then, we've hidden that information from you. You don't really need to see the size of the device when you're building the buttons, the different actions that you want to put on it. So, thanks for the question, Pac-Man Jr. Um, oh, you'll see the little 19 uh, indicator next to my name there. Um, I booked my tickets for TwitchCon. Um, so, we're all set to go. It's going to be tremendous that week. Hey, Michael Jolly. Good to see you. So, let me roll back over here. These are... The issues that I have outstanding. Let's go to this view. That's a little bit better. That's th those cheers are, yeah. Th the cheers are a little bit old there. How about this one? Yeah, we we heard this already. It's like Stream Elements is rolling back the last five minutes. So, just checking again. I mean, Twitch and all. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, wow, it is working. 
the trolling is strong. All right, I think that's where we left off, right? Okay. Um, so here's the issues list, and we were building a date picker control in Blazor. So this is C Sharp, HTML, and CSS, so that you can pick a day and be able to see the schedule of it. And we ran into just a little bit of an issue with the height wasn't quite being calculated properly. So I, I left off and said, you know what, let me come back to this. Let's just put an issue out here to fix the date, the height of the date picker control. And our friend Wheelchair Sean here submitted a pull request. So let's just take a quick look at that. I could have clicked the pull request on that last screen. I should have done that. I'm going to click through this way. Now I feel better. Um, here's my fix for the variable height in the day picker control in issue 11. Pretty easy fix. We only needed to add an extra row to the CSS grid to the grid template rows property. First time contributing, so I hope it did this correctly. Let's take a quick look-see. Um, you have one file changed. So you removed, I, I put minimum height in here to kind of force the issue. And, uh, oh, you just stuck an extra row on there. And it works? It did, it, it does it? I mean, I'm see, I'm not familiar with this. Um, what happens? No, I don't want to do that. Let me go back over here, do the thing. I sh no, that's not the page I want to be on. Uh, conversation. So let me get the command line instructions. I can actually get a copy of this locally to work with. So I'm going to copy that. Um, dev, I think it puts it resource management. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now I can paste that in. And now I'll have, so these are the changes the wheelchair Sean put together, correcting that schedule page. Um, so if I go down into my source, go down into Fritz resource management web, I should be able to .NET run this and take a look at what this now looks like. It works. Well, wheelchair Sean says so. I'm assuming it does. I'm going to open it up and just take a look. See, give it the, the, I'm the code reviewer. Yes. Looks good. Sign off. There we go. So we're listening on, where's the web address? I don't see the HTTPS. So I'm going to just copy that one. And uh, I'm using Chromium, uh, the Chromium version of Edge. So I'll navigate there, it'll redirect me. It'll redirect me. Wait. Oh, what the heck? What happened there? Oh, I don't have Postgres started again. Darn it. Um, One second, I gotta restart the database, right? Run DB. Well, that didn't work. That should. Uh, da, da, da. huh? Is it running? Is it? It's sitting there, but it's not running. All right. So I'm gonna just Docker start the database. There we go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Back down there. Dot net run, and now it should find everything and start up properly. Right? Right? HTTP. Content root path, come on. Finish setting up. You know you want to. Waiting for localhost. Ah, there we go. And I'm already logged in, so check my availability. Uh, okay, so that looks good. And if I just, yeah. So it's just got an extra row there, so it always fills out. Cool. See, I, I didn't know you could do that. Um, so yes, wheelchair Sean is right. It does works. It does works. So I am going to merge that f and confirm the merge. Good. Thank you for helping out. Um, I didn't know you could do that. Another row to the CSS grid in CSS. Uh, much appreciated. All right. And we should see, so you see the resource management ticker going by there. In, uh, in a little bit here, that should update 
and include I'll force the refresh it should update and include uh, Sean in the list now neither did you until you played with it this morning look at that learn something new together I love it okay da, da, da. stream tools going by let's see if the other ones come up all right um so this I can close then yep close issue fixed fantastic all right did it uh, I didn't see it go by yet resource management I think it's the last one to come by there it is resource management come on put it in the list it's not showing it yet github takes a little bit to refresh these things it's kind of annoying um Did I move that? Uh, that's a little bit better. There we go. I think that works. All right. Um, yeah, GitHub takes a little bit to refresh. All right, so let's get back in and look at that user interface. See what we can do to finish some of the pieces that we're building here. Um, first off, the vertical align of this isn't lined up quite right. I would prefer this to be up top here. Set the avail availability for me so I can edit over here, creating some scheduled appointments and the like, and be able to reflect it over here as things change. Right? Um, I'd also like to be able to click somewhere here and go to today at some point, you know? kind of reset where I am but this is all C sharp back and forth that's happening here that's there's no JavaScript in that so <coughs> excuse me the uh, pollen and things have just been wonderful this time of year maybe use the bootstrap row with two columns to fix the alignment issue that's not bad. That's not bad. So let's close that. I'm gonna close that. Um, I'm gonna step up just a little bit here. I'm going to check out, not CD. Uh, I'm going to check out my dev branch. That's where I've, is that where I've been working? Um, no, I've been in feature schedule UI. Okay. So let me go to f there. I'm going to uh, delete Sean's branch that I downloaded. I don't need that here locally. And I'm going to pull in the changes that were merged up on... What do you mean? Already up to date. Oh. I need to pull the one that's... There we go. Um, so now everything's up to speed on my branch, my fork of the repository, right? By saying, where'd it go? Git pull upstream says, go get the one from the shared repository, the origin repository that both Sean and I were working on. So I got Sean's changes right there. And then I said, oh, I said it then. And then? I, I said, push, push my changes back up into my private repository on GitHub. So now I have a copy in my GitHub repository and on my workstation repository uh, right there. All right. So I can reopen Visual Studio. Uh, da, 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 this one. And we can start going back into our project, tinker with the user interface a little bit more here. And then I did it again. And then? Do some more uh, database work, some more interaction to make sure that we're saving and loading our data properly from a Postgres database that right now is being hosted in Docker. We'll load that data presented on screen properly and hopefully we'll start formatting properly as well because that user interface would look really, really cool having times and schedules properly laid out. Oh, okay, Visual Studio, get rid of all the screens. I know. Wait. Master, it might be dangerous. I know, it came back again. Go away. Shoot. All right. 
Um, let's see, what are we going to do now? So we've got the thing laid out properly, right? Here's my CSS sheet. And it's nice putting everything in the CSS sheet for the layout because when I look at changing my HTML inside of this, this is called a razor template, right? Our razor templates are a mix of markup and C sharp that are being rendered and being managed um, on the server with this user interface model that I'm working with. However, these same components will work if we compile them for WebAssembly. Source Goot! Come on, it's not gonna read it. Source Goot, thanks so much for that very kind raid. I appreciate you joining us. Raiders, welcome. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're working on a, uh, we're working on a little bit of user interface here, building some schedule user interface with some C Sharp, HTML, CSS, and eventually a little bit of blazer on the client side. Thank you for those kind defense. Ah, oh, source goods attacking. You can also defend with the defend command and defend the channel with gritty. Cause everybody loves gritty. No, you know you know gritty, right? Gritty's one of the emotes we have here on our channel. Pac-Man likes the Razor syntax, used many other markups, but Razor has been my favorite. And Janescu rated Dev Chatter. It's a day full of rating. Nice. Um, Razor syntax is great, and, and I agree with you, Pac-Man Jr. It's, it's pretty nice. You can clearly see when and where C-sharp starts and stops. And um, to the chatter earlier, Bokey, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Let me know. You can... You can see where, where our C-sharp is because it has the at sign here, like right before previous month here, or right the month that's being formatted here. I'm taking a date here called start date. You can see it right here. I'm casting it to a string with this formatting. Uh, the capital M's mean I want a month that's gonna be, because there's four of them, give me the full name of the month and a four digit year. Um, and you see I've got four loops here, standard C-sharp four loops, but when I change from C Sharp to HTML, the templating engine knows that I'm changing, that I'm pivoting back and forth. So the at sign says I'm starting H uh, C Sharp, and it knows when you start putting angle brackets that, oh, we're outputting HTML here. So uh, you also see a block down here, functions. This is renamed in the latest version to code. We'll have to cross that when we implement it when we update to the latest version of ASP.NET Core here. We are in previews, so things are changing. Um, the APIs and the like. So I've got a couple of functions defined here, and you can see I've got a property called start date. I have a, another property called first day of month, and it's formatted badly here. Let's see if we can get that to look a little bit better. So this is a property that has a get on it. So I can get this property first day of month and it'll return this value that it calculates. Another property called last day of month. Let me format that a little bit. Do the thing, that's a bit better. Um, and it'll just return the last day of the month. Previous month is a method that returns void and it just steps back a month. Next month just steps forward a month. Not bad. So um, that's all that this day picker does. And that day picker generates the calendar that you saw at the top. It's used as part of the availability page here. Um, so I've got the availability and this. I think I think I just need to do vertical align uh, top. And that should align these things up at the top. I could, you know what I could do? Um, I could put this whole thing in a div and just mark these as you have to go across. Up. Uh, yes, when I, I can do that in the new Blazor, the, the new version that was just released. However, um, my database provider has not been updated to work with it and Entity Framework, my data interaction, my data ORM, Object Relational Mapper, will break. So I need to avoid that for now. All right. Um, so let's see here. I have... I have the formatting, it didn't look like it was saving properly. So I think we need to do a little bit of detection on that first and 
see if we can get it to load and force things into here properly. Um, let's take a couple notes here, right? Safe doesn't look like it's working properly. For schedule item. Um, I, I'd like a today button. Uh, to reset the user interface. And I think that's really easy. Um, we need to coordinate the day picker and day view views. That's going to be interesting. Um, let's do this. I'm going to take this, move it to the bottom. Let's start with these two. This is, I think, a simple bit to add here. This we can do pretty quickly. Safe doesn't work properly for the schedule item. Get We need to get that working, so then we can display current uh, schedule on the uh, day picker and day view. Not pay view, day view. This, I think, is going to be hard because because let's see how we do when we get there all right does that sound like a good set of tasks here chat room let me know what do you think we're good right talk to me chat room what do you think i think we're on the right path here we can make it better we can make it stronger we can improve it right Stepin, Stepin, is it Stepin lovo hey hello yeah i think we're good all right so let's go in that direction. I'm just going to move this over here onto the next screen over. Um, so let's put together a today button. Today button. Okay. Um, Ancient Coder, good to see you. Hello. So if I put together a today button, um, I would want it up here with the month, at up at up probably up near the top. Um, well, let's look at, let's look at the user interface and... See if we can figure out exactly where to put it. <laughs> Wait a sec. You know who who does that really well? Alright, there went Quill Tony. Alright, so here's my availability. That's better. It's lined up at the top. My schedule. And I've got the day picker and the day view, right? So day picker is what we're calling this calendar thing because I want you to be able to click in here and choose a day. And when you choose one of these, I want it to reflect that day down here in the day view. Because eventually, when you key in your schedule items, I want to be able to see here's when I'm not available to work. Haha, <laughs> ancient coder, I got you. I keyed in a project this time. <laughs> I remembered to do it. Yes, I did. I remembered to set a project. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I do. It's so much fun when a plan comes together. Uh... Squirrel. Okay, let's get back to this. So it, maybe I put a today button here. Well, wait. Um looking at how this is yeah the the picker starts at is just this part it's just that so maybe i have a today button that sits over here but i feel like it should be part of this maybe i put i don't know uh well thank you thank you ancient coder um <laughs> Um, I do have stickers of the of the cool bot, the bot with shades, and I actually stuck it. I stuck one to the back of my phone. Look at that, huh? Look at that. That's better. So, cool bot on the phone. I like it, and uh, I also have uh, stickers of the Octocat and the. Um, and Clippy with the rainbow beard, three of our emotes. I have those uh, here, um, not here. They're in my bag over there, not here. You get my point. Um, all right, so where should I put the, the button? Do I put it down at the bottom? I think putting it down at the bottom would be 
best. Am I on an iPhone? Yes, I am. This is a, I just got the XR. I'm, uh, it's been fun. I'm enjoying it. I can't say there's much to, uh, complain about. It's, it's been pretty good to me so far. So that's the month picker, and I feel like after this is where I should put that button. Right, so if I have a button here, um, ID, and we'll call this uh, go to today, uh, on click, on click, and I'll give it a method called go to today. That doesn't exist yet, but we'll make it. And I'll just call it today. Um, no, no. No. Uh, void go to today. This is easy, right? Start date, that's the date that we're referencing and we're painting everything off of. We'll just say uh, date time dot today. So that should be, right? That should just work. And take always reset that interface. So, Assuming I did this right, that'll take care of that simple button. So, right, and and I'm just setting a property here. I'm using the date time object and referencing the today property on it to be able to flip this back. And because everything it binds off of, right, these things reference and it, it's painting the calendar based on properties that are derived from that start date. It will just look correct. There it is. There's my home availability thank you um we're gonna need to fix where that's located or make it bigger or something make some space here or something i don't know we'll figure it out so if i navigate somewhere else and i click today it comes back to today i feel like we should probably also highlight what today is at some point you know when you close quotation marks do you press right arrow to move forward or am i missing something um, and that's by, uh, is that Abraham? I like, I see what you did there. A right, Abraham? <laughs> nice. Nice. What'd you do? He broke it out into syllables. That's what, that's what he did. That's what Abraham did. Okay. Um, so Visual Studio will complete it for you automatically. I usually use the arrow, I... It's up in the air. Sometimes I'll use the arrow key. Sometimes I'll use quote. If you're typing quote and it sees it's the end of an attribute, it'll just jump past it to the next space. Uh, it is intelligent enough. Yeah, Stelzy. Yeah, it's pretty cool like that. So um, I'll figure out this layout l later, but I've got I've got it working. Right, we'll move it around and do something with it. But I want to get these two coordinated so that. Whatever this selects appears down here. You know, I'm also, so I'm gonna put some X's here next to our today. We need to coordinate these two. We wanna display the current. <coughs> I think we also want to um, display today with a box around the uh, date. Maybe, does that sound good chat room? When I type something in the quotes and try and close it, it adds another quotation mark instead of jumping out. Um, that m that might be a feature. It's like auto close quotes or something. Uh, let's take a quick look at the Visual Studio here. I believe. No. Um, formatting. Dun, 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 label indentation. No. Indent, indent, indent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I thought there was something about automatically closing quotes. There, <coughs> there is something about automatically closing quotes. Um, Visual Studio. Um, closing quotes. There is a thing. Hey, Python noob. Good to see you. Um, turn off brackets, quotes, auto completion. Dun, 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 dun. Text editor, C sharp, automatic brace completion. 
Um, yeah, but I don't think that does quotes also. Brackets, quotes, curly braces. Oh. So it does do it also. For the brace completion. Where'd it go? Or maybe it's not here anymore. Am I missing it? I'm probably missing this. Is it down here? No. Formatting. General. No. Ah, there it is. Automatic brace completion. So. That'll do the thing for you. Zyres! Hello! Welcome! Um, so... That takes care of that little bit, but I feel like, yeah, I should display whatever today is with a box around the date. I feel like that's just, like, the right thing to do. You know? Um... So... Right? I feel like there's like a, a today ID that I could put on this. You know? Shoot. And there's a way to do that test in Razor. To conditionally add, right? Uh, Razor conditionally add an attribute. You know what I'm talking about? Conditional attribute and formatting. Right, instead of putting this big at if statement in the middle of it, there's a way to do this now. Uh, class equals at my class. Uh huh. If at my class is null, it won't use the attribute at all. Fantastic. And it came from my buddy, John Galloway. The John Galloway. Um, I'm working on a stream with John that we might be doing here later later in July um, alright so let's do a test and decide using that syntax so do, 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 do. let's so I gotta do the for loop um, at let's call it uh, let's call it today today sure um all right, so I need to get the start date, which is, in, right, if it's, so I'm going to say, uh, start date dot month equals, oh boy, this is going to be ugly, uh, date time dot today dot month, and start date dot year equals, uh, date time dot today dot year, and i equals date time dot today dot day right then today is going to be um uh today otherwise it'll be empty string so what i should be able to do now is say um right class equals at today and that should work that the class will actually be omitted if today is if today is null if it's null oh, well, we better make that null now why doesn't it like this bool and int all right so that's good oh this needs to be double equals let's put these on separate lines so you can see all the comparisons there we go um, I equals, not date, day. Come on. Thank you. All right. So that should look a little bit better. Now I'll have a today class on the thing here. So I'll be able to look at month picker today, right? Month picker uh, today. 
And let's put a border. Let's make it one pixel solid uh, red. Because I like red. Now, I'm going to have to restart this. And that should take this there. Are there any websites for practicing your HTML, CSS, and backend? Um, take a look at something like CodePen. CodePen will help you with some HTML and CSS. Um, the practicing what that looks like. There we go. Can make that a little bit bigger. That's not it. There it is. That's better. So you can see where today is, right? It'd be nice also if I could mouse over it and it said today also, but that's all right. Oh, you know what I could do? Uh, I could make cursor, I could make it a, a pointer. That's not it, there it is. Right, so when I mouse over it, come on, show me the thing. Free code camp. Um, free code camp does a lot with node. Oh my gosh. Somebody take a screenshot. Six, 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 six. That's a lot of sixes. Thank you, all of our followers. I appreciate that. Um, it didn't load right away. So many sixes. I know. And 60 viewers. <gasps> and 60% sentiment. I don't like the 60% sentiment, but I get it. There it goes. So when I mouse over it, I get the little pointer instead. Maybe I can get the help thing. Whatever. Um, but it goes away. And when I click back, it comes back. Good. All right. That was simple. I like that. Um, I could add a title to it too. Right? So if it's today. Right? Um... Right, I could say uh, var uh, today title equals, um, no, today dot, no, string dot is null or empty today. If it is null or empty, no. Otherwise, um, today. So I should be able then to also do something like this equals at today title and that should format and put, put a little title there you're out of here lightning incoming oh boy take care michael jolly watch out for the lightning um all right so that's finish that let's move this up here coordinate the day picker and day view views Day picker and day view views. Okay. So right now, this isn't going to be a CSS thing. This is going to be a coordination deal between these two. So I have a selected date parameter on the day view, that area down below that lists the hours. And I have a similar start date for the day picker. And I need to coordinate these two. Genius. Oh boy. A lot of sixes. Thank you, Ancient Coder. And Nalaj, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, yeah, let me click through those. All those sixes there. Oh my gosh. Somebody take Let's tweet that. Uh, there's a lot of sixes on my uh, Twitch stream right there we go. Tweet it. Um, okay. Ba, 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 fantastic. Um, <laughs> good. All right. Uh, Deeds. Recently started getting into embedded development, getting a new laptop in the meantime. Any tips on operating system? Would I recommend Linux or Windows for embedded system developer? Um, 420 Flapjack. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, Deeds, I'm I'm partial to Windows because you can run Linux embedded as part of it. You get you're going to get a lot more flexibility. You're going to get a lot of great tools that you can use so that you can program Linux applications from within Windows, um, and you can host a VM easily 
from Windows. Jason 21 just subscribed. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate the sub, and we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Thanks to every subscription, every cheer, we'll make those donations. I very much appreciate that. Flapjacks. Yeah. Um, but you'll have that flexibility to choose Windows or Linux from within a uh, virtual machine, right? If you're on Linux, you can start up Windows and put it into a virtual machine, um, but you won't be able to do like Windows Docker containers. So you're gonna get a little bit more flexibility. You'll also be able to use Visual Studio Community Edition. Um, I'm using the Enterprise Edition here, but the Community Edition is free for hobbyists, for folks that are learning, folks that are going to school. So you get to use that along with all the great C++ and .NET compilers that come with it. So give it a try, check it out. Um, that's, that's why I would prefer Windows for the flexibility that it is going to give me. You'll still be able to do everything Linux inside of it too. And also Windows subsystem for Linux runs tremendous in the latest versions of Windows. Um, am I using C Sharp for web app? Asks, I'm not gonna pronounce your name. Um, we're, we try to stay family friendly here. Yes, I am using C Sharp. Um, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. Um, really appreciate learning a lot and you want to return some. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. And uh, as always, I, I like to pay it forward so that we can help other folks that are out there that want to learn technology as well. So thank you very, very much. Solaris asks Nalage, uh, is Solaris still a thing? How much is Solaris? I don't. It, uh, Solaris would be on an Oracle machine, I guess. I don't know. Just started using WSL2 much faster, says Smap. There you go. WSL is the Windows subsystem for Linux. When you see folks refer to that acronym. Uh, it's still a thing, but it's a zombie. Eh, I'm not surprised. Vladimir uh, Makarov. Thank you, Vladimir, for joining us. I appreciate that. and look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, so what I need to do here is I have a, a parameter, this date, that I need to pass and coordinate between these two components. Now, there's a thing in Blazor. I haven't tried it yet, so let's learn about this together. Called a cascading parameter. Um, Blazor, right? And Blazor spelled with an O, not an E. Here you go. Blazor cascading values and parameters. And this is on WebAssembly, man. This is somebody else's website, somebody else's. Um, this is the pull request that creates it, it looks like. Cascading dropdowns. Communicate between components. Um, hierarchical Blazor components. That sounds good, too. From Dino Esposito. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Cascading, there we go. Yep, yep. So there's cascading value at context, at child context. Okay. That doesn't show me anything. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Still not showing me anything. No. Open development, and it's now under the name Alumos. Oh, okay. Neat. Um, all right, here it is. Cascading parameter, protected modal context, outermost env. So how's that being passed in? We'll bring the data defined outside the realm of the content component. Okay. So is it just, I have to define it with cascading parameter, and it'll just, it'll, it'll flow like the spice in Dune? Um, right, because I define render component day picker here. Say that. And I specify the date here. So maybe if I set start date, right? So let's move this. And does it, does, does it need to have, I guess it needs to have the same name, right? Um, let's call it selected date in both places. I think that's going to be the right way to go instead of start date. So I'm going to use F2 here to rename. Junie Von Esch! Spice is flowing. And then? Oh yes, the spice in Dune will flow. And then? Uh, they'll trade it. And then? They'll be pirates. And then? They'll steal it. And then? 
they'll make a movie. And then people will love it for many, many years. And then people will get confused by it. And then they'll make another movie. And then they're still making the movie. It's not done. All right. Uh, I'm going to call this selected date. I use the F2 uh, refactor feature in Visual Studio, so it just renames that feature everywhere that I was referencing it inside my uh, component here. So now if I go back over here, I should be able to lift this and bring it up here. There we go. Um, and I'm going to warn you out there, friends. Junie's been trying very hard to get me to swear on stream. I don't swear on my stream. I swear on her stream. Uh, all right. Here we go. So if I change this to cascading parameter, does that just work? You know? It'd be cool if it just worked. But I don't know. You'd never do that to me on stream. You would never do that to me on stream. First, take a big step back. No. Len? That, that's my producer, Len Grossman, over here. I'm not going to take a step back. I've got it under control. Junie's a friend, all right? Um, I don't swear on my stream. I swear on her stream. Yes! I swear on Junie's stream, not on my stream. Um. <laughs> okay, now they're being they're being bad in chat. I tell you, they're gonna they're gonna get me into trouble. Um, see that? See that? Uh, let's see if that actually works. I'm not gonna be able to see if it changes anything over here in the day view because I'm not actually loading data yet. But I think I'm coordinating the two. I think. I think I am. I think I am. I think I am. Um, here we go. Come on. I know this is going to work. All right, so there it is. And yeah, I can't tell if this is changing, but it's it at the very least, right? It's updating this. I don't know if it's updating all those other things. Look at all those hearts from Swava. Are those different channels that you're submitted to? There's fairies. Uh, I don't know who that second one is. Uh, BBX Ben, there's Kitten's Hearts, yeah, there's uh, Imperial's Hearts, she's not an Imperial girl, Cinnabars, there's Mine, see, Mine has some character to it because I've got the robot holding up the hearts. That's a lot of love, absolutely. What's t what test framework do I prefer and why, asks Raldo1994, N-Unit, X-Unit, or MS test? Um, good question, let me, let me pause for a second here. Squirrel! Yeah. Um, for unit testing, um, y you can't like MS test. Can we, can we agree? MS test is a, is a knockoff on N unit. So, uh, you, I don't, I'm not a fan of MS test. N unit was, I, I was a big fan of N unit, uh, for many, many years with .NET framework. N unit was r really the first unit test framework and it was very powerful, very flexible, great stuff. XUnit, though, has really come into its own in, in recent years because the .NET team, when they were building .NET Core, started, they, quite frankly, one of the developers of XUnit was on the team. So they were able to get his help retrofitting it so they could test and make sure that .NET Core worked. Um, so I think XUnit right now is, is a really good solution, and I label it as my preferred unit test framework right now. I'm flexible though. I'm going to bounce back and forth and choose the one that works best for me. They all work similar. They, they all do the same thing. They all do it great. They all plug in fantastic to your environment. It's a question of what syntax do you like. And right now, um, I'm, I'm moved by XUnit. Um, yours is the only robot that I have. Well, thank you, Svava. Thank you for, for sharing the, uh, the robot love with us. And to, um, to Raldo, that's, that's the, the unit test framework I know and now we know. and knowing is half the battle and knowing is half the battle um select the times highlight and if the highlight gets removed it gets refreshed good idea Nick Cravers here hello hello uh so if I pivot it, so is it being repainted or not there's nothing for it to paint right I don't Thanks for the tip, Nick. But I don't, I don't have anything that it's painting because I force the date to start at January first at eight a.m. Because I just want to paint the eight hours. I don't have anything inside of it. 
yet. So that brings me to uh, I, I think it's I think it's passing that back and forth. I can't tell. Um, but we'll I think hit this I I think this works. So I'm gonna put question marks next to it because I think it's gonna be our next big thing. Um, we'll need to verify that once I get down past this. So let's do this. I'm gonna move this down here, put the thing there. Um, safe doesn't look like it's working properly for my schedule items. It doesn't. Because um, if I name this, uh, right, if I call this uh, uh, Blazer class, right, and just whatever date's in there, add it, it saves it, and it, well, it doesn't say, I don't know if it saves it, but it has a thing here. Let me go back over to this. I mean, it did, I guess it did something. Initialized my DB context. I don't, maybe it did. I don't know. Um, but if I refresh the screen, it should load that, right? And it doesn't load it. So I don't think it's quite saving properly. Nalaj asks, uh, is MS Test a Microsoft product? Yes. However, um, it's not going to read that, is it? Robert Tables is rating my stream with 27 viewers. Oh my goodness. Uh, we can defend the channel with exclamation point defend. There it is. We shall defend the channel. Um, thanks so much, Robert Tables. I appreciate you with the raid today. Oh heck. Yeah, look at them all. Woo! Look at all those emotes. Um, thanks so much. I really appreciate the raid. Uh, Raiders, my name is Jeff Fritz. You may know who I am. I'm wearing an Apollo hat today because it's the 50th anniversary of the moon landing this month. 50 years ago, we Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. And uh, I'm a big fan of space. Uh, where we work, and, and I'm working on some user interface components here using C Sharp, um, HTML, and CSS with the Blazor user interface framework. Um, all open source, and it's running, actually. <laughs> this is the Edge browser with Chromium that we're using. Uh, what were you working on over there in Robert's stream? I know his name isn't really Robert, but it... it it goes with the shtick here, okay? Uh, I thought I saw you were doing some hardware work today. Um, it wasn't faked. Nope, not faked. What wasn't faked? Look at all the emotes. Oh my goodness, I've got to pull this back. Uh, Makarov reminds me of the Fearsome Red Machine legendary Russian hockey team. They were awesome, that hockey team from the 80s. I tried. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. 6669. Closing in on 6,700 followers. If that number gets to 8,000 before September 15th, I'm going to dye this beard rainbow. And it's going to be tremendous. Surprise hardware stream. Soldered a multifunction digital clock with temperature. Ooh. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you for joining us, Raiders. And I hope you stick around and, and chat, enjoy some music. We're going to write a little bit of code together. Not so much hardware today. Look at I tried with the Kappa. Ah, I like the Kappa. Yes, is that Ny Nyarama? Am I pronouncing that right? Um, yes, the, the Edge browser with Chromium. I'm actually running. You can see it here. I'm running the Canary version. This is the version that's built every day. Um, I believe it's... Is it Windows Edge Insider, I think, is where it is? There it is. Microsoft Edge Insider. If you go to Microsoft Edge Insider, let me copy this link, put it in the chat room for you. Um, you can choose to download a version of Edge that works for you. Um, there's a beta channel that updates every six weeks. There's a developer channel that updates weekly. Or if you're feeling particularly dangerous, What's that? if you're feeling particularly risky, What's that? If, if Jack, if you like the Canary version, uh, that gets updated every day. And I haven't had too much of a problem with this. You can get the Canary version that the developers are actively working on. It's available for Windows 10, 8, 8 1, 7, and Mac. It runs with Chrome as the HTML renderer. It uses, uh, I believe it's called the Trident. No, what's the, what's the JavaScript uh, engine for, for Edge? I forget what it's called. Why would you want the Edge browser? Serious question. Um, the Edge browser is what's going to come with Windows. 
um, Edge does some some things with security and managing privacy that Google doesn't do. Um, Edge integrates very nicely with Active Directory. So when you log into things on a corporate network, you can log in to your workstation and Edge will carry that credential to Active Directory and you'll get the same great rendering that you expect from those Chromium-based browsers like both Chrome, now Edge, Opera uses the same rendering engine as well. Chakra Core, that's what it is, thank you. V8 is Chrome. Yep. So that's why you may want to choose this browser. For the most part, it's gonna render everything the same. It uses extensions that work just the same in Chrome, but you'll get the same great rendering, you get the same great developer tools. I just hit F12 and there's my developer tools and it looks like the Chrome developer tools. They're there. They're here in Edge and they work great. Give it a try. It's free to download and, and try it out. And if you don't like it, uninstall it. No risk. Interested in the new Edge browser? Apparently they're adding some really nice features. They're trying. There is a dark mode. Um, have I gotten uh, about Edge? I don't know if I've gotten dark mode to turn on. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like you have to turn on Windows dark mode. And then you can turn on your... I said and then. And then? You can turn on your browser dark mode. But I don't ha have dark mode turned on for Windows. Um, so I think I need to figure out why this isn't saving. Uh, going, going back... Squirrel! Going back into the... Uh, the project that we're working on up there all right so i'm going to close this let's take a look at why it's not saving so i'm going to just take a step back in the availability there's an availability right i have an availability page and it has an availability component the component is what's rendering and painting that stuff on screen here it is availability oh wait a sec i think i know what i'm not doing um, the availability component here, uh, let's merge these, this one, um, scrolling down here, it shows my scheduled appointments, it gives me my data entry area and a fat button to add a new schedule item, fine. Um, looking down here, here's the add new schedule item, db context schedules update, so it's going to go into the schedules object. Update, add the new schedule that was just added. Well, update the current schedule, right? Add the new schedule item and then save the changes. I did it again. And then? Yes. Um, you can change it in dev tools. Can I? Dev tools. Uh, <laughs> edge flags edge theme enabled um, it's enabled alright what do I set it as use a lighter dark theme in your browser based on OS preferences so it picks up the operating system um, I thought What's under settings here? There it is. Ah. Uh, thanks, Nick Craver. I appreciate the pointer. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Thanks for the help there, chat room. I appreciate it. Points to you there. For some reason, my stream deck's responding a little bit slow playing these sound effects today. It's taking like an extra second to play. So it's coming through and it should be trying to save the changes here. I wonder what's happening to my database. So let's go over here to the console. I'm running my database inside of a Docker container, right? Um, I'll Docker PS and you can see there's my container right there. Um, so I should be able to, to jump into it, right? Um, so I'm gonna do Docker exec I'm going to run on resource management, resource MGMT, and let's run bash. So I hop into that. Oops. Uh, I need to tell it I want to be. There we go. All right. 
So I should be able to do PSQL uh, dash U, right? Postgres uh, dash P, right? And it should prompt me? No. Um, like that? No. Um, is it gonna let me just key it in like that? No. I forget what it is. What are the... I forget the switches to pass in here. I thought, and I forget these every time. Dash U is the username, right? So dash U, and I want to be able to specify it's dash W, of course. And I think I just made the password password. Yeah, there it is. All right. Show my tables. There's my tables. Good. Um, let's take a look at what's in uh, schedules, right? Select star from schedules. Okay, so I have a schedule. Do I have schedule items? Uh, I have to put quotes around it. I've got schedule items. So why aren't they coming back? Um, <laughs> get availability. Persons includes... I didn't include schedule item in the select. I didn't include schedule item in the select. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about this for a second. Um, it's not just dot include; it's then include. Yeah, yeah. Um, lambda expression navigating. Uh, so I'm going yes schedule. So schedule. Uh, S dot schedule items. This is our syntax that we're using to select data using the um, entity framework capabilities that are made available to us with ASP.NET Core. It's a library, it's open source that uh, Microsoft manages. Um, so I have a database context. I'm referencing my persons table. It's a DB set. You see the helper there. I'm going to include my schedule. So include that data also, then include the schedule items for that person ID and return the schedule. This should work now. Have the Blazor bits been updated to the latest preview six? Andres, um, they have been. I'm not using them because my, um, my database provider is, it doesn't work with, uh, Entity Framework Core Preview 6. There's a there, there's a break in there that we need to deal with. So, guys are added to added scheduled sending to Gmail. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Is that a thing now? That sounds uh, quite compelling, Nyarma. Um, what's it doing? What are you doing? just kind of stop there you got an, e an email saying it is it says every afternoon every afternoon says it is haven't checked i had no that's news to me that sounds really cool being able to schedule emails right that's like a very enterprisey type feature um i can't believe google would think like that there we go there's all my scheduled appointments all right so i'm feeling good that they're actually saved you can see there's quiltoni's class and that formatting is awful. That's okay. We'll figure it. Well, this is going to start appearing over here. And I'm going to feel good about that. Um, all right. So how do I make these appear over here? Um, do I load the schedule at the top level? and make it a cascading parameter into these. So that when you update the schedule, it updates these two things. I, th I think that sounds good. Google has to keep its calendar up and running first. Nice, Robert Tables. Nice. Yes, they had a little bit of an outage. Um, let's not kick a very large software company while they're down, but uh, it happens to everybody. You're, you're going to have outages. Sounds like a logical line of thought. Thank you, Robert. I will go in that direction then. 
So if we're getting the schedule here, I'm going to need another cascading parameter for the schedule. Right, so we get my availability and that goes into this my schedule object here. Okay, so if I decorate this with cascading parameter, that sounds good. Um, we need to make this a, uh, a property so that cascading parameter can properly be applied. This is called an attribute in C Sharp. Um, you apply it to uh, properties like this one. Properties have get and set. Uh, mm, what, Nick Craver, what would you call those? Method definitions? These decorators here that define how you interact with the property. I'm not quite sure how you, what you refer to that as. You just want to thank Google for the four meetings you were able to miss. You missed four meetings? Toast, Mark, go. He did. Accessors. Thank you. Accessors. Yes, these are accessors. They define how you can access, what you can access in that property. Can you get data out of it? Can you set data in that property? Um, and I'm going to default set it to null. By making this a cascading parameter, I should be able to grab this and put it in my other two uh, components here so that... That feels good. So that it gets passed around, hopefully. Hopefully. So if, in fact, uh, okay, these don't know what schedule is, so I need to make sure that they know what schedule is. Schedule comes out of this using statement. So I can actually share that and make that available to everybody by putting it in my, this is called a view, right, in this one? No, not that one. Not that one. You can put it in your imports file, right? Not that one. Um, I thought there was an imports file sitting here somewhere, but I don't see it. Hmm. We'll just put it, lob it into each one of them for right now until I get that resolved. So if I do that, okay. Um, let's do this. And so I have it in availability. I have to put it in day picker. There we go. So now it should know what these things are. Uh, my schedule, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here, good. All right, so right, it's it, it's tinting the color of it because it knows what that thing is now. It is, I thought they changed it from view imports to imports for Blazor libraries. So it changes just a little bit. Nyarma says, I'm kind of sad it gets added when I'm done with my bachelor's degree, but at least I can send a work-related mail. Not having possible workplaces, not giving a bad impression. Yeah, right. Oh, you sent this at 3 a.m. No, no, I actually rescheduled it. It went out at 6.30 a.m. I woke up. You were the first thing on my mind. Sent that out to you immediately. Okay. So the cascading parameter didn't break, but now I want to see if I can get it to load some of these things in here. Maybe if... Maybe if the date has an event on it, let's just set the background color. Let's set a different class on this, you know, to show that there's an activity on that date, right? So I'm going to go back to my notes list here. Fix that. Good. Because that's one more thing. Um, coming back to this over here. Um, so when I'm on the day picker, I keep on to sing in the, seeing the day man song. Um, so I'm detecting if it needs the day class. Day class. No. Um, Defender of the night class. No. Um, I'm going to look at the schedule items. And if there is a schedule item that has the same day as that day. Yeah. We'll be able to set it. Now, I'm doing this weird comparison to try and figure out what today is f when you're counting through the days of the month. Uh, that's silly. Let's let's do this, right? Let's make this a new date time um, with the, uh, yeah, the selected month is going to be in there, but that comes after the selected year, right? Um... Right, that's whatever the current day is, right? 
right? Year, month, day. Yeah, why not? Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so now I can just say if. Uh, this day dot uh, date right equals date time today dot date I don't need that last check now it becomes a little bit simpler to say this is today um, does it have an, any uh, appointments um, has appointments okay so let's say uh, my schedule dot, I'm just gonna check schedule items for right now. Any, uh, an item where item dot, I'm, just, uh, I'm gonna make this simple. I know I need to be a little bit more complex than this when I'm measuring, but I just wanna check to see if there's something on there so I can set an appointment, set a background to make it look like it's being passed through. Uh, equals this day dot date. Then we'll set has appointment to APPT. Otherwise, no. So we can also do right class equals at has APPT, and it should set that appropriate. Now why doesn't it like that? Oh my gosh, I missed a bunch of chat here. Hang on. Broadband already at snail pace today. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, Smab. Uh, for Blazer, looks like it's, yeah, it's underscore imports. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought it was, Nick. Um, I could throw that, I could put that in there. You know what, let's come back and, if somebody wants to put together a quick pull request, we'll uh, lob that in there. Um, I'm gonna refresh that, that GitHub ticker again, force that, see if we can get it to update. Time, uh, take care, Rambling Geeks. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's, it, I know it's a late night for our f uh, friends in Europe. Anyone using Streamlink being able to lower the latency to less than 10 seconds? Streamlink. Streamlink? Streamlink? Uh, Drexel Dave, you've been watching my 8-hour intro to ASP.NET Core course. Now you're... Oh my gosh! Drexel Dave, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you, you watching that video. Um, I need to put a comment on that video. We're going to run it Again, we're going to run that workshop again with updated content for ASP.NET Core 2.2 in July. Check the events link up above. Control click it. Don't just click it. You'll navigate away. Don't. Yeah. Control click the events so you don't navigate away. Combine class attributes there. Can I do that? Can I just say like this? You're just here for the soothing voice. Welcome back to Fritz and Friends Write Code Together. Thanks so much. It's been a great night tonight. Our friend Juni Von Esch is just here because she likes calling me DJ Fritzy Fritz. How's it going? Thanks so much. It'll be awesome. Absolutely, Drexel Dave. Um, I really enjoy giving that workshop. We're going to recruit some friends to help us out. Actually, hang on. While I'm here, I, you know what? I've, uh, I've got to take care of something. Um, I'm going to put a VIP tag there on Nick Craver. Thanks so much, Nick. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I appreciate your insight and contributions you've had here for us. So I'll, I'll drop a quick VIP tag there. Um, .NET Core 2.2 and not 3.0, asks Andres. Uh, 3.0 is planned for um, September release. And there's actually another group that's planning, another group at Microsoft planning a 3.0 workshop. They're, ac they're actually planning a heck of a lot more than a workshop. So there's a heck of a lot more coming for that. Um, so look, for, yeah, keep an eye open. Look forward to that one. It'll be, uh, it'll be tremendous when it's, when it comes out here. Uh, let me see. So there's a lot of sixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to do one more thing while I'm here. Can I do this? No, that's not what I wanted to do. Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. Did that. There we go. Yep. Do this. Dun, dun, dun. Come on, do the thing. There we go. All right, just drop a quick gift sub. Thanks so much for help, uh, Nick. Really appreciate that. Hey, look at that. 
Sharp Fritz gifted Nick Craver a subscription. There we Sharp go. Fritz gifted a tier one sub to Nick Craver. Yeah, yeah, I know I did. Thank you. Uh, 3.0 has so many things we need to migrate lots of stuff. Yes. It will be. It, it's going to be a tremendous milestone. A lot of performance things that happen in 3.0. I want to make sure that folks have know a little bit about 2.2 before they get to 3.0. 3.0 actually won't be a LTS, a long-term servicing release that you can um, that that you can go to for long-term support. Right? You're you're going to have to be you're going to be forced to upgrade to 3.1 at in its projected November late fall release schedule. Let's see if we get those uh, get those classes to work properly. So go to the availability page and it's not going to show me this because I didn't put anything with the class. Boom! And now I feel shame. <laughs> it broke. All right. Um, view details isn't going... Oh, I really broke it. <gasps> Snap! Yeah, we made a mistake here. We shouldn't have gone here. I, I, I did a bad. Shame. Shame. I know. I broke Visual Shame. Studio. Uh, restart. I know, I broke Visual Studio, Junie! Wait, master. It might be dangerous. Really dangerous. Be careful. Hey, what can I tell you? I'm working on a preview version of Visual Studio with a preview version of Framework with a preview version of a browser on a preview version of an operating system. You see a pattern here? Press F in chat to pay respects. <laughs> Bad things happen. What can I tell you? Right? Let's try and reopen that. <laughs> am I even the real C Sharp Fritz or am I just a preview version? If I was a preview version, you'd be able to you'd be able to see from a distance away because of the sequin jacket. Know what I mean? Sequin jacket. It's a thing. Um, let's see if we can do this again. So, it, what it looks like was my schedule wasn't properly being passed in. Okay, already! Am I live or am I Memorex? I'll tell you what I am. I drink and I know things. I, I do. Um, alright. Let's think this through. Cascading parameter is over here somewhere. How's it being passed in and where is it? Right, can I save it somewhere? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. This, I, I should have read this clo more closely, but I don't feel like it because Dino wrote it and I feel like being difficult. Um, I'm gonna go over here, ASP.NET, yeah, ASP.NET Core. Click into the thing. I want three zero. Cas, cas key, no. Um, what's Blazor? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, components. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Um, <laughs> all right, components. Um, import components. Eh. Cascading values and parameters. Shazam. All right, let's see what we can learn here. Theme example. So we have a class called theme info with a button class. The ancestor component can provide a cascading value using the cascading value component. The cascading value component wraps a subtree of the component hierarchy and supplies a single value to all components within the subtree. Okay. Um, cascading value theme. Do we need to use, is that what we need to do? To make use of cascading values, components declare cascading parameters using the cascading parameter attribute based on a string name value. Oh. Binding with the string name value is relevant. 
Got to run. Good seeing you, uh, Chris Jones. Thanks so much for joining us. Real men wear sequins, says Robert Tables. Yes, indeed. Ha <laughs> ha, yes I do. And uh, it's a thing. It's fun. You know? What's that? It, sequins, they're, they're a thing. What's that? It, uh, you wear them every now and again, okay? You got a problem with that, Jack? Come on now. Um, data down, unidirectional data. Despite the terms being different here than what you're used to. That's what it feels like as well. Um, let's see here. So, to make use, components must declare cascading values using the cascading parameter. So, I did that. Name equals user permissions, and it's binding a value like this. Is relevant if you have multiple cascading values of the same type and need to differentiate them within the same subtree. Okay. Cascading values parameters theme component. Okay, so these are components. And it's setting a thing here. Cascading parameters also enable components to collaborate across the component hierarchy. Consider the following tab set example in the sab sample app. Okay. The cascading per values parameter tab set component uses the tab set component, which contains several tab components. Uh, okay. We said the word tab too many times. Um, the child tab components aren't explicitly passed as parameters to the tab set. No, they're not. The child tab components are part of the child content of the tab set. Right. However, the tab set still needs to know about each tab component so that it can render the headers and the active tab. <sighs> to enable this coordination without requiring additional code, the tab set component can provide itself as a cascading value. Aha! Cascading value this. Interesting. Okay. Uh huh. The dependent components capture the tab set as a cascading parameter. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Data binding memo is memoization. Yeah. So, all right. So if I have cascading value, value equals something. And in each one of these, it's receiving it. But once again, I'm component to component. Right, when I'm outside, like I am, I mean, I, I can. I guess I can wrap these up as one big parameter, right? Because I have the availability and it includes these other two. And I'm not really ever going to use them somewhere. Well, no, I will use them somewhere else. Let's, all right. Let's have it render availability and... Uh, yeah. Take this stuff. Um, and do this. Thank you. And down here, we'll end that tag. I think that that works for this. And I should be able then to reference day picker and day view from here now. Right, I should be able to take these and put them here like that. But I don't have to do the awaits because I'm in component mode at this point. So I should be able to do, right? Um, and I need to bind the day on that, right? So these, it, it's, re ye that's confusing, no. Um, <laughs> let's go to the theme example. Cascading value at theme. So at theme is coming in from where? That's not clear to me. Components declare cascading parameters 
Okay, so I guess this is up at the top and we're binding it and passing it down. You love being able to see my keyboard shortcuts. Oh! Uh, thank you. Um... So do I do... Right? Hang on. Try this again. Um, cascading values and parameters solve this problem, blah, blah, blah. Theme example. Okay. You have a theme info class that allows it to flow down. So theme info is just this. So there's a theme info object here, right? And you have a cascading value that defines inside the body here, we're gonna pass that theme object down as a cascading value. Okay. To make use of cascading values, components declare cascading parameters. So do I do this? Do I do ca a cascading value? All right, all right. Um, uh, value equals, uh, let's start with, uh, oh my gosh, type Jeff, type! Date time dot today. Name is a selected date. And do we just put it here? So now we have day picker. And next to the day picker, we have, oh, look at this. It's like, it's like I cheated. I have day view. And that, that might work. Because it's called selected date, it's being passed in. So if I, right, if I do this and say name, that's not right, right? Uh, name equals selected date. How did I get a K in there? You know what I mean? Are you with me here, chat room? So I need to put it here. All right. Let's see if it works. Private, private var down bottom was the source. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I like showing being you being able to see my hotkeys as I'm pressing them because I don't always call them out when I press them. That way you can ask a question about it if if it doesn't make sense what I'm doing here. Come on. It it's ooh, it's blowing up. Object reference not right. My schedule isn't a thing inside of day picker yet. Right, that's another cascading parameter I need to pass along. So how do I pass a second cascading parameter? Right? Or do I wrap it again? Or do I just have Aiden, do I have like a view model that I pass around? Alternative corn. Welcome. Is that alternative corn like the band corn? But that would be with a K, so I'm guessing not. Let me know. Um. Yeah, you're gonna, we would need to pass around multiple objects there. No, oh gosh. Are you from Nebraska, Cornhusker country? I'm gonna keep guessing. Omaha, Omaha, you're from Omaha. I've been to Omaha. Glorious part of, of, the, uh, of the country. All right, let's nest some of these. Uh, value equals, uh, well, I'm gonna have to get, well, it's right here. So maybe I take it off of this, right? Value equals uh, my schedule. Yeah, that's a thing. Name equals uh, my schedule. I shouldn't have to put that on there, but I kind of agree with Nick, it, but it, about nesting these, it looks weird but it should work. So let's copy this, put the thing over here and call this my schedule. Uh, copy that whole thing, put it over here, do the thing, paste, save, right? Do the thing, right? Because there's the... That emote. Oh, I broke it. 
No. No. No, it sure looks like it should have run. Why didn't you run? Do it again. A wrapper object. Most way people end up here. Yeah. Some sort of a view model, I think, that you pass around that has, in my case, both the schedule and the date that you're searching for. Go, go, come on. Hey, all right, all right. If I F12 into this, um, the, the, the themes in my browser are clashing. I shouldn't be using it like that. Uh, I'm gonna change this back. Sorry. I don't like a clashing browser. Um, but I, w I did want to go through here and click on... So, like, Cool Tony's class on the 18th. If I click on that... It does have the appointment! So if I create a... Month picker. Uh, background. Color. Uh, sky blue. No. Midnight blue. Yes. Uh, color white. Hey. All right. And if I change, they come back. Cool. All right. That makes sense. Maze? McNerdius, you sound like you're from Michigan. With the blue in the maze. With the Wolverines. Like the food, but the origin of your name is weird. That's okay, alternative corn. You're from the Netherlands. Cool. All right. Yeah, we got a thing working. We got a thing working. Eh? Eh? All right. Now the next part. How do we plot the appropriate time on this grid? Know what I mean? Um, so we want to draw a box on CSS grid over on this side so that it spans columns, it spans entries appropriately. These are some really bad times to work with here. And I wish I could delete them. I wish I could delete them. I wish I could delete them. Good. That's better. Um, so let's make this start at like uh, 1600 and have it go to 1800. Um, and we'll call this a uh, uh, blazer class. Look at that. And it lit up properly. Nice. Don't like the formatting, but I don't care. That's going to go away. Change the day? Sure. Let's change the... Oh, I d it spans days. Snap. That's wrong. That's going to be a problem. Let's do this on this day. There we go. Ooh, no. Wait, look at that. Sean. It, it's, yeah, it's showing UTC. Well... So to Nick Graver's point, um, our, our sample, our use case scenario is a, it's a local organization that we're making this for. So time zone isn't an issue for what we're building yet. Um, that worries me. I changed the date and it's not saving with the appropriate date. Yeah. Look at that. Didn't even take the hours didn't take the values out of that properly at all that's a problem that's a real problem yeah we found a bug red alert we found a bug i need i need like a red alert sound i have a red alert sound i use it on um i use it on tony's stream for an over for a thing that i do over there uh no that's not gonna work no that's not gonna work either mm, no we broke something this might work. No. Um, so that's interesting. Okay. We're... Let's walk this back. Let me close that. I don't really need that one. Fairy wings! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <laughs> Fairy wings! Thank you so, so much for that very kind cheer. 
Um, I appreciate that. We're going to make a donation to Veterans Who Code. And uh, 25 other folks in chat just got pride cheers. Thanks to Twitch's collaboration and support with the Trevor Project. Uh, I really appreciate that, Fairy. Uh, and I uh, hope everybody appreciates the emotes they got. Let uh, Click the little button up at the top of the chat room if you got some emotes. Let Fairy know that you appreciate uh, her her generosity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, you broke my concentration. All right. This guy breaks my concentration, too. Yeah, this guy. No, I'm not going to dance. Um, so why is it not giving me the date back that's bound to that? Um, it's over here in this component is where we're working with those dates. So we've date time local and there's the value. Do I need to turn this into a bind? Because it, it looks like it's not bringing that value back. Pride emotes make you happy. Ah, they, they should make everybody happy. We want to allow folks to celebrate uh, what makes everybody unique. Some folks are a little bit different than others, and that's okay. Everybody's welcome. Nobody's the same. Yeah, what didn't you like? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, let's try getting rid of the two string on this. I have a feeling that doesn't like it there. Let's see if we can get that to work. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing I don't have that tip cup out. Otherwise, I'm gonna have I would have folks going a little bit silly today with the cheers on that. Fairy wings is at the top of the cheer list. Look at that. Let's see if we get the thing to load. Good. See, that doesn't work. I tried to bind a date and it just looks ugly. Um, and I'm also going to want to come down here and right like I'd like it to. Show a default. Um, let's put a break right there. I love the debugger in Visual Studio. It makes me happy. If I pull this down, and if I select uh, Saturday, and I have to specify a time, uh, let's say uh, 9. You did not just go there. Fine. Uh, 2019. It really uh, nine. Okay, um, six twenty-two twenty nineteen. It, yeah, it doesn't pop over into the next one. Uh, I'll have it go to eleven. Never a problem. You never have to spend money on on bits or or. Uh, subs here uh, we pay it forward we we share that that love with friends that that need a little bit of uh, support here on this channel um, never you should never feel guilty about not having bits I, I'm pressing one and it's it, it, it wipes out here that feels like a yeah, look at that gone that's working But, oh, look at that. It wiped it out again. Hmm. That control is rebelling. Yeah, I know. I don't want to build a complete date picker for an input here. This, I mean, I'm, I'm specifying date time. It should, it should just do the date time thing properly, right? And if I make it just date time, right? Because that's a thing. Yeah. What's it look like with that? Format value. Uh, that's what I tried. 
Borky asks, you never get nervous when something is not working as expected? Borky, you haven't been here long enough. Nothing works as expected. <laughs> Trust me on this one. Yeah, so now I kind of lose, right, like a little bit of the value of this. Right, so if I change it to that, make this a thing, right, I lost the control deal here. Um, if I say add new schedule item, my new schedule item, there it is, is 9 to 11. So it, it did get the date properly, right? And it did save properly. There it is. I didn't give it a name. I thought name was required. I need to make that required. Anyways, um, so that's there and it should update that one. So let's go back over here. Do, do that delete. Do this one more time. Uh, let's call this blazer class. Uh, 622, 22. Let's go from nine to 11, go. Okay, and if I refresh the screen, okay, it has just my one and it's over here. Good, now I need to figure out how to paint it in here. Hard to see the pickers behind you on the stream. Sorry about that. Yeah, because it scrolled down so far. Good point. Um, uh, not a bad suggestion there, Nick. Let's take the list of these and move these below the controls. Because I, I expect to ditch these at some point. So I'm using Alt up and down to move things up and down. And I just scooted that down. Um, all right, so how do I draw a box in that grid view, right? That's my day view. Can I F12 into that? That would have been so cool if it did it. So, so cool, but it didn't. Um, so how do I draw, I have, I've received my schedule here. How do I draw a span appropriately inside of my day view? Located appropriately because I'm not on a grid at this point. Hmm. So let's look here. Day view is a grid and it doesn't have a specified height. But I know that its total height is is 12 FRs. Hmm. And if I'm starting on the zero with minute, I'm always starting on an FR. Yeah. Hmm. How do I do that? Man. Uh, let's go over here. CSS grid. Um, position. Um, position. Position of scam. Hang on. Do you see this? Position a table, position a car, position a scam, position a business. That's weird. Position a box on well, CSS grid, right? Box alignment. Yeah, absolute positioning, because I want, I okay, so they're laid out, but I want to overlay things like this. Uh, it's still located in box two's position, but box two remains in that position unaffected. Box three is also. Positioning items shrink to fit their co contents. Mm. Mm. Most time you ever waste on bug hunting was searching through all array indexers in the project when a dev of a rapper I decided to throw an out of range exception mm. yeah the aliasing was a little ugly um, I don't want to read the, the specification I want to read your blog about it your friend alright so that's not going to do what I needed how do I make a fixed column no mm. static position should use content box maybe 
Mm, no. I don't want to see a discussion about it. Show me how it works. Um, create website layouts, justification and alignment, order and align items. I want to overlay it over top of the grid, right? We're using CSS grid for that day view, right? So how do I put something over it? CSS layout containers, what do you think? Uh, I don't want a crash course YouTube video to watch. I want to see just how to do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, yeah, alternative corn. They're messing with me a little bit here as well. Um, overlay a box on CSS grid. Uh, build a CSS grid overlay. How to create an overlay? Create a box with text over an image in a grid. Ah, uh, maybe. Trying to grid, grid view of 12 images in three columns with a box, text box overlay at the bottom of each. Ugh. No. Um. <laughs> Center, transparent, no repeat. No. Draw what I want to see. I don't want to. That's kind of what I want to see. Kind of. Right, I want to see something like, uh, I don't want to go to my Google Calendar right now. Um, I, I, yeah. Hmm. No. Take paint. No. Uh, be easier to do it in um, Excel, to be honest. Z stacking CSS3 flex boxes, maybe. I think we're going to have to hang it up here and do a little research in between. Um, right, so, uh, I'm looking for, let me see, schedule. Day schedule uh, JavaScript component. Oh, I said JavaScript. See how that's spanning these different grid items? I want to do that except vertically. Now yeah, the Kendo scheduler. That does it nicely. Right, we've effectively built this. And it would be nice to be able to click into these in the future in my layout and automatically create my schedule item. That'd be cool. Not there yet. Th these are Kendo components. There, there we go. That's what I want to be able to do right there. I've already got these heading down the side. I want to be able to do that. Wheelchair Sean has a suggestion. CSS grid layout and positioned items. Mm. Position absolute, grid column, grid row. Regular item stretches both horizontally and vertically, so it takes the whole size of the grid area. Position items shrink to fit and adapts its size to the contents. Uh -huh. Defines a two by two grid with the position item in is using grid area for four. So it tries to go to the fourth row in the fourth column. However, the position items cannot create those implicit tracks. So it, because it can't get there, it makes it the full size. Yeah. Um, I want 
to get it to break out of a grid cell as well. I don't want to stay just in one either. Offsets to place your position items left, right, top. Offsets will apply inside the grid area. Well, there you go. Position absolute grid column one auto. Grid two auto. That's this. And it's got left, right, top, bottom. that does it I need to figure out how far offset from the top but I don't know how big the grid rows are well I do know right grid template rows I do know the size of them because of that if I use that right um, right so grid template rows right now are just one fractional one fractional one fractional So if I force those to a specific dimension, say 30 pixels, 40 pixels, if I force them to an EM size, that would work, right? Here's what I'm going to do. It's getting late. I'm, I'm, my time is done here. Um, I'm going to take a quick peek. If I'm right, if I'm right, um, let's see. Let's take a quick peek here. Yeah, let's do this. Let's set up for a raid. Let's wrap up and check this stuff in. I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten so far. I want to remember this. Um, investigate positioning with uh, CSS using technique like. So we can hit this tomorrow when we come back to it. So I think that's what we're going to hit next time. Let's check in our changes here. Exit this, exit that. Uh, all right, um, now passing schedule information around. Ah, uh, wrong one, there we go. Let's see, who's over here? Um, I think we're going to raid somebody who we haven't raided. Is the current question the height? How many rows? Yes. Yep. I think we're going to raid somebody we haven't raided in a while. I don't think we've ever raided them. Let's set up for a raid. We've got our code checked in. Let's uh, save it off here. Push that out to my GitHub, so I've got it saved for later. And if you want to check it out, it's out there available for you. But I think we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid Adrian Hall. Adrian's another member of the Live Coders team, and he's writing some code right now, talking about some cloud tools. Um, we're gonna head over there. If you want to stick around, that's great. But that's our raid call I just copied into the chat room. A raid call is a block of text that we're going to use to announce our presence when we get there. So if you're a subscriber, grab that first line of text. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text with the missiles. This way, everybody has something that they can shout and announce our presence when we get over to Adrian's channel. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I learned a lot tonight. We, we put a couple pieces together here around Blazor to make our components work together nicely. And we're now passing schedule information around, and it's plotting. We've at least got it plotted on the calendar. Next time, we'll get it plotted on the day view. Thank you, Shazbot Haxer, for the follow. But we're, you caught us right as we're about to read. 
All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I'll see you next time, and that'll be tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, 7 a.m. Pacific. I'll see you then. This video, like all my other videos, will be available. It'll be archived out on YouTube in the next day or two. All right. Take care, everybody. Say hi to Adron for me. We'll see you next time.